Nice, huh? But now the challenge here is to stain these doors. And it's a little complicated by the fact that these are pine doors and this is oak trim. And we went with the pine doors really for budget reasons. Oak doors are wicked expensive. But now we want to stain them and I want to show you guys how I do wood staining. I'm pretty much novice wood stainer. But again, it was an opportunity to show you guys how to do something. And the best way to do that is by doing it. You learn by doing. You don't want to stain these in place because people are living here. We're going to take these into the shop and stain them there. All right? Here we go. Staining wood is not hard, but what's key is the prep. And you know, I'm not one for details and this is very detail oriented, but I'm gonna make it happen and I'm gonna show you guys how you can do it too. A Couple of key things you need. First of all, the stain ingredients, I call them. If you're gonna be using pine or a softwood, you need a pre-stain conditioner. This is really important. I skipped this the first time I did it and I paid the price. It's real, the stain is really blotchy on pine and softwoods if you don't use this first, okay? You want the stain itself, we'll go into this more as we're applying it, and then a polyurethane. This will go on a couple days later after the stain is dried. To prepare this, we're going to use a 220 grit sandpaper. This is this new sandpaper I just got at the store. It's kind of, it's, it's like sandpaper on a flexible film. Be really good for getting around the corners and stuff here. Uh, some gloves, always good. Some blue tape is handy to have. These are called tack claws. It's cheese cloths that is impregnated with, I think, beeswax. It's for pulling up the sawdust from the sandpaper. And then I like to have, these are cut up old t-shirts, which is kind of like a lintless cloth. And then these are, I call them chip brushes, is the inexpensive disposable brushes. I use this for applying the stain. Screwdriver's always happy, handy, six in one. Oh, and I forgot, Ventil whoa, ventilation is key. Usually in Garden Fork, my mantra is, if all else fails, read directions. When it comes to staining wood, read directions, okay? Especially on the back of this can before you dump stain all over it. Remove all the hardware. Come on up, there we go. So I've got a worn out uh, sanding sponge here and I'm just gonna take my new sandpaper and wrap it around there. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then the key thing is, is we're gonna sand, well we have to sand the whole door, but specifically these areas here where a router has gone is rougher than the smooth parts here. We wanna generally sand with the grain of the wood, but when we come to something like this, I usually go in here with my fingers and smooth out like that. Don't forget, it's not part of my Star Wars uniform costume. Um, a really good mask, a uh, dust mask for when you're sanding. I, and then this is, I think it's called an organic vapor mask. It does makes an amazing difference when you're dealing with oil-based paints and stains and stuff. You know that headache that you get? It's either non-existent or greatly reduced with a good mask. Don't cheap out on this, okay? I'll link in the show notes to one that I use, okay? Okay, these are all nicely sanded. It takes longer than you think it will. Now we're gonna hit it with a vacuum and the tack cloth. Tack cloth. So to figure out which color we wanted, what stain color we wanted, I bought little jars of a bunch of different stains here and did some tests. I first treated this whole piece of pine with the pretreatment uh, stuff, I can't remember what it's called, but that stuff. And then I did one coat of each and labeled it. Labeling is important. And we settled on this one up here, the red mahogany. And then to figure out the, the depth of darkness or tone we wanted, I did another set of tests here, which are uh, two coats, one coat, and also lengths of time that I left the stain on. Seven minutes before rubbing it, 15 minutes before rubbing it. And then I also did a couple where I put polyurethane on as well because the polyurethane will change the color. It'll deepen it, I think, as well. So do these tests before you stain. Just so everyone got it the first time, this is really important, okay?
So this door hasn't been treated yet. This door has. For all the instructions that come with your pre-stained wood conditioner, and I wipe down the excess because that's what it says to do, I let this sit as long as the instructions say. So again, you're in a well-ventilated area with a mask. We have our stain and a brush. So then after that set amount of time, you take your t-shirts and wipe this down. You don't want to rub real hard, you just want to get up the excess. This looks really nice. This just shows that if you do the sanding and the pre-treatment, it makes a huge difference. After you've done your wood treatment and you've laid on your first coat of stain, you sometimes get this kind of weirdness here. Don't worry about it. Happens on the first coat, not on the second. Rub with the grain of the wood. There's our first coat, looks really nice. Then we have a problem. I don't know what happened here, but this is all splotched. No fun. I, man, I'm, whenever I do a stain job, I mess something up. And I think what I did this time is I took the brush from the stain, the wood conditioner, the pre-stain conditioner, and I think I just took this and boop, dropped it right into the uh, stain itself. And so I tainted the stain with wood conditioner. And that's all I can think of as to what created that. The only way to really uh, remove stain from a piece of wood is by sanding it. So... So we're doing today. What fun. With the help of my visual aids here, and half a day of sanding. So I I basically sanded the areas that had the pockmarky blotchy stuff on it. The other pieces were fine. So I'll just carefully, if that's a garden fork word, um, stain these other pieces here. We're good to go. So I'll condition and then I'll stain. I want to show you, by the way, the very cool uh, exhaust system I've built because I'm working in the basement here, but I've got a super exhaust system. Come here. looks so much better. You know, I, you lose a day when you mess up, but I thought, I don't want to buy a new door and redo the hinges and the hard door hardware and all that, so. Uh, after you rough sand it with the belt sander, I went over it with the palm sander down to a 220 grit, nice and smooth. And then um, it's time now for the second coat of stain on these doors because we did some color tests. Well, it doesn't look very good. Um, but multiple tests of double coat, leaving it on 15 minutes or five minutes, what's it look like with the polyurethane on it. And we determined that two coats at about seven minutes a piece. So today we're gonna to do the second coat. Make sure you have ample ventilation. I rigged up three box fans, pulling the air out of the basement with a fresh air intake over here. Okay, so second coat is on. Depending on, it just looks really cool like this. Um, how dark you want it to be is how long you leave this on. If all else fails, read directions uh, on the back of the can. Looking very nice. Just gonna let this dry for now, okay? Then we're gonna flip them over and stain the other sides. Really nice. This is what the doors look like after two coats of stain and three coats of polyurethane. If you want to learn how to polyurethane wood, there's a link below in the show notes and hopefully a button up here that you can click as well to see our how to polyurethane wood video. The lab doors are down here. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that it might not be the most perfect 
project in the world, but you learn by doing, and that's what I did. And you can do this, just ventilation is key, good vapor mask is key. Experiment on some scrap wood before you work on the expensive wood. And it looks really good. So we have a ton more videos like this. It's, I call it Eclectic DIY. It's cooking, gardening, home improvement. Check out our channel, the link is right below here. And if you have any ideas or suggestions or questions about staining wood, please talk to me in the comments below. I try and respond to most everything there. All right, if you wanna see the polyurethane video, the link is below as well. So make it a great day, I'll see you later. Are you hungry? <laughs> What? What? What?